torch and patina gel. In this video, we're going to do a combination of one-to-one -one torch patina and the patina gel to thicken it up. Now, normally we use the patina gel for vertical surfaces, and in this case, we're not going to be working on a vertical surface. We're just going to be working on a, a flat piece of copper, but I wanted to try and get specific patterns, so I wanted to put a, a brush marks in, essentially just get a lot of streaks going, and so I gelled it up so it just wouldn't flood out and get away from me, basically to try and keep those patterns and if I did this with liquid, it would want to flow out flat. So you can see here, I'm just rubbing it on with a rag just to get those specifics. So the gel is making it so it doesn't want to flow out. It's staying more where I'm putting it. And so the gel does a really nice job for runs and all sorts of different stuff. But I really like that I can mess with it a little bit more on a creative level for that as well. Now you can see it is going much slower than usual. You can see a little bit of reaction coming in, but it is much slower than usual because we've effectively diluted our torch patina because we put patina gel in it. So we did a one-to-one, -one, so effectively your torch patina is diluted about 50%. So it just takes a little bit longer, and I'm just messing with it continuously, just trying to get these streaks in, trying to get an interesting look rather than our normal either splotchy or overall finish appearance. And I'm going to need to do a couple coats because it is coming in so thin. That's not abnormal when we do the patina gel with the torch. It does slow the reaction. But I've decided that I wanted to switch to a brush. I could have continued with the rag, but the reason why I switched to a brush is I wanted to, once again, change the look a little bit. So I put in at first these bigger streaks, which are getting the patina going, which is starting the process, but I switched to the smaller brush to try and get more narrow uh, finishes, essentially. I wanted more smaller streaks, and that's all I want is I want different looks, different thickness, different patterns. I wanted it to look like a normal kind of hand put in patina. And switching the applicator helps with that a little bit without having me do so much work. Now this is coat number three and you can see it's still going on rather slow. That's why a test is really important, especially when you start playing with dilutions or if you start adding in the patina gel, you need to know exactly what you're going with before you go to do your bigger piece. So I just brushed on a third coat and I think it's important to remind everyone that we are rinsing with water after this and since it is a gel solution I'm definitely wiping it down with a microfiber towel because I don't want it to grab on and hold on any better. On a liquid solution the water washes it off a lot easier for the torch patina but the gel does have it grab on a little bit better so I do wipe I normally do anyways, but I just wanted to point that out specifically. Now, I've got some great streaking going on, but it's not as much blue as I wanted, so I'm just going to do a flow coat. I've got a bunch of this extra patina, the gel that I already mixed up with the torch patina, so I just set up a drip station basically, just dumped it on there. And I actually let it react a little bit longer than I wanted. The blues didn't pop out quite as much. They, they're not vibrant blues. They're a little duller, but that's okay. That's why we do test samples as well. But you can see a flow coat is just going to overall give that full appearance. Now we rinse it with water. We're going to pat dry this. And you can see that it's purple when it's wet. And really that blue is starting to pop out pretty well. I really like how it looks. I would have liked a little bit more varying color, but I definitely got the stripes that I wanted. So this is just a fun technique you can do with torch and patina gel. Now we're coming back with the color lock because color lock does a great job at popping those colors up really, really well. And I'm going to do two coats. I do the omnidirectional. And remember, you can do clear guard or Everclear over the top if you want a more protective layer, but the color lock does pop those really, really well. And here we have our final piece. You can see that some of the purple stuck in, but a lot of that blue kind of came through. So for those of you who always say, we can do small pieces in our videos, can we do big pieces? Yes. Short answers, yes. It just takes more time. And so we went ahead and did the patina gel and torch once again and I'm sanding this at first with 180 I'm just trying to go in and, and really smooth it out it had a little minor scratches here and there so I wanted to try and sand it really well and then I went back with the um, 220 on this one just because of time I didn't really need it as smooth so I didn't want to do the 400 
Again, Sculpt Novell Metal Cleaner, and we'll use the Scotch Brite pad and we'll clean it up real well. Just takes a, a little bit bigger Scotch Brite pad on this one, so you got to be careful not to put in the scratches. I don't want to. So I actually do two coats, one with a Scotch Brite to make sure I get everything out, and then I did a second coat where I just let it soak on the surface, and we've covered that in a different video as well. I like doing the more transparent finishes where I don't uh, Scotch Brite. And you can see even here, I'm going in with a white Scotch Brite trying to just minimize any scratches possible. Once we get this cleaned up and rinsed off, dried, then we're gonna roll on our patina gel and torch combination. We're going to use a 3 8 inch nap roller. There's nothing special about this. It's not for heavy surfaces, so you definitely don't want a heavy textured one. And Well, maybe you do, and maybe you do want a little bit more textured to this. But we just use the standard one, not for smooth surfaces and not for heavy surfaces. And just rolling it on like you would a normal paint. There's nothing, no special tactic. I went one way and then I went another way just to break up variability just because of how patinas react. But otherwise, I just keep going back and dipping the roller again and then going again. But after about three to four minutes, I rinsed it. And here you can see after our first coat, you can already see this patina really kind of looks cool. I, I, I really liked how this first coat looked. It was just a little bit of reaction, but I wanted more of those purples and blues, so we went again. Now, with our second coat on this one, I did notice that the patina kicked off much faster than my second coat on that uh, streaked on or brushed on finish. So again, test sample, very important for the similar characteristics or applications as well. But that's okay, because we were prepared for it. I knew I was gonna try and get two coats on this again, and then rinse it off, and then dry it. And the torch patina is so interesting that its true color really comes out once it's dry. It's almost completely different being a reddish purple, and then when you dry it, the blues start coming out. So it's kind of a trip there. So here you can see that blue is absolutely beautiful. It's got some slight purples and reds through, but overall it came out really, really blue. And I'm going to move the camera here so you can kind of see, and hopefully it doesn't uh, move too much on you. I know I don't normally do moving shots, but I wanted to show the whole piece a little bit more close up before we get a clear coat on it. You can see those subtle purples on, and it absolutely looks gorgeous. The uh, camera really just doesn't do it justice, and it just so often that's true, unfortunately. But it is a really nice finish. So let's get some color lock on here, and then we can get a good picture of it. We're going to go ahead and uh, do two coats of this color lock here. Just going back and forth, we'll give it an hour and then recoat it. And I'll do another one of those moving shots so you can see as it's drying, the purples are pretty apparent in this one now but we still got some really nice blues. And then here we'll switch over to our still shot in the studio. You can see we got a really nice bluish red coming through, um, a lot of purples and the blues are off to the side and there's more blues in person. Taking a picture of this one was a real challenge though because it was just so big. Torch and Patina Gel is available at www.sculptnouveau.com or by calling us at 760-432-8242.